We are continuing our Christmas-themed broadcast. I'm about to drive to Bible Tracks Incorporated. I'll be careful on the slippery roads, I promise. But don't miss as we hear from Paul Levine and Bob Finley on the Bible Track Echoes radio broadcast. Hey friend, I'm Evangelist Mike McCurry. I'd like to welcome you to this week of Christmas broadcasts here on the Bible Tract Echoes radio program. Thank you so much for being a part. I am excited about what I have to share with you today. Now, I know you may be saying, our faithful listeners, you may be thinking to yourself, he always says he's excited. Well, I can't help it if I am always excited. Almost somehow, in some form or fashion, I get more excited each day about what we have to talk about. And today is no exception. And here's why. Because I get to share with you from the Bible Tracks Bulletin from 1960, the very end of the year, Paul Levine records for us the story of Blind Bob Finley's conversion. Those of you that know our founder, know of our founder, Paul Levine, knew he had a faithful partner in crime, a faithful sidekick named Bob Finley. And at a young age, God put those men together and they traveled the country speaking and preaching and singing for the glory of God. And today I get to share with you the story of Blind Bob Finley's conversion to Christ. I'm excited. We're going to jump into that in just one moment. Before we do, though, I'd like to tell you about our ministry, Bible Tracks Incorporated. Been around for over 80 years. We print, distribute, we ship gospel tracks around the world free of charge. The only way we can do that is through people like you and the grace of God. So please, if you would, consider visiting BibleTracksInc.org. Your contribution to our ministry, it keeps this radio program on the air. It keeps the history, the legacy of a ministry like this, like the story that I'm about to tell. Friend, can I tell you sadly, no one else is telling this story. I'm excited that I have the privilege, the great honor of helping in some small way of keeping the legacy of Dr. Paul Levine and Bob Finley alive through this program, through this ministry. It's all possible because God and God using people like you to partner with us. And so if you would, consider visiting BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. While you're there, you can order our free sample packet if you've never seen our products before. We'll send that to you free of charge. And if you would, you could consider making a tax-deductible contribution towards our ministry. We would greatly appreciate it, and I know that the cause of Christ would appreciate it as well. Let's jump right into it without further ado. This is the story of Bob Finley's conversion. Here we go. I was saved through the faithful witness of godly Sunday school teachers and the personal work of the superintendent of the School for the Blind at Vinton, Iowa, says Bob, when he gives his testimony. One day, when Bob was seven, the superintendent came into the nursery and told the children the story of Peter's denial of Christ. This made a strong impression on Bob, and he realized that he, too, had done wrong. However, no one spoke to him further about it, so that ended the matter for the time being. If he had followed through, says Bob, he could have led me to Christ right then and there. If I can pause and make practical application, I'd like to point out that we must, as Christian soul winners, as laborers in the harvest of lost souls, we must be willing to bring people to a point of decision. But I digress. Let's continue on. Then, at the age of 12, Bob was reading in the Bible the story of the crucifixion, and again he became convicted of his need of a Savior. He says he just ignored the feeling and did nothing about it at that time. However, a few months later he did join a church and was quote-unquote baptized. He says he didn't hear anything in that church about being born again or about being saved so he got the idea in his own mind that he had done the right thing and that now he was saved and that all was well with his soul. By the way, we continue on in Paul Levine's own words, there are multiplied thousands, possibly millions of people just like Bob, who are resting in the false hope that all is well with their soul because they are religious. Then, when Bob was about 18, two of the music teachers began witnessing to him. 
One of them said, My father was 30 years old before he got saved. Saved? What does that mean? thought Bob. It had been a long time since he had heard that term used. Another teacher said to him, If you would give yourself to the Lord, he could use you. Bob thought to himself, What's the matter with these teachers? Don't they think, don't they know that I'm a Christian? This drove Bob to his Bible. The more he read, the more he realized his need of Christ, but he did nothing about it. He went on in this condition until he was about the age of twenty. He was still at the School of the Blind of Edmonton, studying voice and guitar, and then one day the superintendent, Mr. Palmer, who had been at the school for about five years, called Bob to his office just to speak with him about his soul. Bob thought he was being called on the carpet for something, but he couldn't imagine why. Or, thought Bob, maybe Mr. Palmer wants to talk to me about a singing date, since by then Bob was making many appearances on various programs in the area as a soloist. But when Bob walked in, Mr. Palmer said, Have you ever thought about being saved? At first, Bob tried to defend himself by saying, Why, Mr. Palmer, I belong to a church, and I have been baptized. I didn't ask you that, Bob. I asked you if you had ever thought about being saved. Have you ever accepted Christ as your Savior? Finally, Bob had to admit that he really wasn't saved, that he was just an unsaved church member. Mr. Palmer talked to Bob kindly and explained the way of salvation, that it was not through religion or morality, but by receiving the Lord Jesus. John 1.12, Paul Levine records in this segment right here, he says, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I will parenthetically make a statement here that it doesn't say even to them that attend church, even to them that get baptized, even to them that are good people. No, friend, even to them that believe on his name. We jump back in. The faithful witness of the teachers and of the superintendent made a strong impression on the young singer. Added to this personal contact was Palmer's messages in chapel there at the school. Finally, about three weeks later, Bob crawled out of bed one night, got on his knees, and trusted him alone, the living Lord, for salvation. The scripture that God used to bring me to himself, Bob said, was Isaiah 118. Come now. And let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I'm not setting myself up on a pedestal. And I know I'm not perfect. And I have failed my Lord many times, Bob says. But I am sorry for all my failings. But I do thank God for the true witness of the school teachers and the superintendent at the Iowa School of the Blind at Vinton, Iowa, through which I learned the truth about how to be saved. How wonderful it is that Bob should hear the gospel from the teachers at school. How wonderful it would be if our schools across America were filled with teachers who loved the Lord Jesus and believed the Bible and would witness faithfully to those under their care. What a tremendous tragedy that the Bible has been kicked out of our schools and the teaching of evolution put in its place. This, along with the programs of dancing and, and all these sensual things, it's not doing our young people any good. Friend, I'd like to remind you, if I can, this is myself as the host speaking, Paul Levine, he wrote this in 1960, and America and our school systems have not gotten any better. Friend, we have work to do for the gospel's sake. Let's continue. No wonder, he says, there are so many Christian schools springing up across America. I'm for them. It was while I attended a Christian school during my second year in high school at Boone Biblical College that the Lord brought me to himself in the surrender of my life, a yieldingness to the Lord. And now, reader, what about you? Could it be that you are like Bob? That you too are a church member? That you are religious? That you are striving to be saved by clean living and by sincerity? Remember the Bible says in Titus 3.5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. My friend, if you have not received the living Christ, who is alive at God's right hand today in the same flesh, bones, and body in which he was crucified and buried, if you have not received him as your God and trusted him to save you, I beg of you to do it now before it is too late. Don't depend on your clean living or your church membership or your religious activities any longer. You must receive the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved. 
do it now before it's too late. If you will contact us and tell us that you have now received the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm speaking the words that Paul Levine said many years ago, but I echo them. I say, ditto, amen. I, we, will send you literature that will help you understand how you can be certain of your salvation and grow in the Lord. Now, I'm going to substitute our address here. Here's multiple ways you can contact us. Number one, you can actually write to us. Put in the address, Bible Tracks Incorporated, P.O. Box 188. Again, that's Bible Tracks, Inc., P.O. Box 188. That's Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Now, that's how you can get a hold of us through snail mail. But if you'd like to get a hold of me directly, you can text me actually right now at 309-316-7240. 309-316-7240. Maybe you'd like to use email. You can send us an email at info, I-N-F-O, at BibleTracksInc.org. Of course, all of these methods of contacting us can be found on our website, BibleTracksInc.org. Maybe you'd like to just reach out and order one of our sample packets. Maybe you'd like to read some gospel tracts that Paul Levine wrote himself many years ago. There are some newer ones, some current ones, some written by my predecessor, Pastor Mark Smith, some written by myself. Many of them, though, still were written many years ago by Dr. Paul Levine, just like what I read for you today, The Conversion of Bob Finley. Now, Bob may have been a blind man physically, But his eyes were opened spiritually, and he accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. And how amazing it is that we get to read this example, this testimony from 60 plus years ago, recorded for us through audio today. And it gives you an opportunity to accept Christ. Friend, do you know Jesus? Nothing could be better for you to do today than to accept Christ. Here, just a few days shy of the day that we celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ. What better way to celebrate the Christmas season than to accept his free gift for all eternity? Friend, we would love to hear from you. I say that with all sincerity. Our ministry, Bible Tracks Incorporated, is predicated upon exactly what I'm talking to you about today. Friend, please contact us. Text me if you would. 309 316-7240. You are not going to want to miss the remainder of this Christmas week of broadcast here on Bible Tract Echoes. Please make sure to join us tomorrow. Thank you so much for your listenership today. God bless. Have a great day for His glory. We'll talk to you soon.